Okay, perfect. Good, yeah, good morning to all of you. I also have to agree to Rico. It's a little bit different feeling sitting here in the office and not standing in front of all you people. And I have to confess, I even more missing the Singapore time zone because here it's still dark. So I have to say, I don't feel like a hero at the moment, but the heroes I'm talking about are not human heroes, are not made of flesh and bones. And so let's see what these heroes are. So, so the title is Holding Out for a Hero, Closing Automation Gaps with Mobile Robots from Germany. So, right. ah, yeah. So even if I can't see you, now, uh, you at the moment, uh, this might be a picture of some of you have been looking in recent months, especially with Corona has affected the whole world and Corona crisis is still ongoing, a worldwide pandemic, a tragedy for mankind. Many things have changed drastically in private life as well in business and effects on economy are huge and so, yeah, crisis, panic is one thing. Also the semiconductor industry is suffering from Corona crisis quite a lot. I think worldwide, at, at least uh, here in Europe, not, not very much, but anyway, they are uh, all affected. And uh, of course, some regions and some companies are more affected, some less. And especially FAPs, of course, that use still many operators have to compensate for lower availability of their workforce. I heard from, some, for example, from a friend from Singapore that, of course, as many workers uh, from Malaysia and Singapore uh, were not able in Corona times to enter the country. And of course, this is then a lack of workforce operators. And uh, in general, of course, uh, this shows again that, yeah, being dependent on people and the workforce, and especially in uh, production intensive uh, manufacturing has some risks, especially in Corona times. But if we go back to a uh, half year ago, there were still also already issues with, uh, let's say, lack of automation, yeah? which uh, where labor intensive manufacturing has weaknesses. And the weaknesses are, uh, let's say, regarding quality. Yeah, uh, what we hear from our customers that waiver breakage, particles are very often introduced by humans. Yeah, of course, there are many reasons for particles, but the biggest source normally in clean rooms are the humans, the operators. You have wrong processing. You have sometimes have rough handling, especially uh, here in, 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 in Europe, in Germany, when you hear from economy, when the economy is doing well, people are not so happy to work in shifts and, and especially night shifts. And so I assume it's somehow the same uh, all over the world. And of course, there are also uh, issues regarding time, yeah, material for processes on time, the systems, production system, expensive, very expensive production systems are sometimes waiting um, for material and of course, last but not least, uh, when you have uh, a very big workforce, you always have some costs uh, involved with uh, the workforce. So all these issues were already there before Corona crisis. And uh, yeah, I think uh, they are addressed by more and more customers. Of course, these effects, the costs, the quality, the time, are, uh, have, let's say, have different magnitudes in different regions. But uh, we see from all over the world, from requests that the trend towards higher automation, especially also for, let's say, older FAPs, this means 200 millimeter FAPs, uh, is growing quite a lot. And again, now, especially in Corona times. So, help is needed and the help to do, let's say, to uh, increase automation, of course, covers a wide range of smart automation solutions or smart automation superheroes. Of course, especially in 300 millimeter FAPs, you have yeah, 
a very high level of automation right from the beginning with the OHT systems and also many 200 millimeter fabs at least have some uh, interbay transportation systems with conveyors. And then uh, some systems already have robotic handling cells to do uh, loading, especially uh, if let's say some uh, yeah, maybe high risk systems also with, 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 with chemicals or so are involved. And of course, there's also um, many storage systems, automated storage systems available stockers. Yeah, again, 300 millimeter of 300 millimeter production, of course, is much ahead of 200 millimeter there. Um, but uh, also in 300 millimeter FEPs, of course, not everything is automated and still they have many manual racks and many FEPs standing around. So, but all these, all these solutions for transportation, for loading, and also for storage have one, uh, let's say, missing part, and this is a very often the flexibility. But rescue is near, either by a hero or by a mobile robot. And our answer to this, uh, let's say, is a very flexible system, also mobile robot systems, which can combine everything in one, in one system. And just as an example, we have, this is also, a, maybe I should explain here, we have several robot families, uh, mobile robot families, and one is also called Hero. Originally, this was derived from helping robot, but the name is quite nice. Of course, it was meant as, as, as a hero. And um, yeah, here it just shows a picture of a 300 millimeter version. So let's maybe show a little, the video is, uh, the video is running, good. So on the, yeah, as I mentioned, we have different mobile robot families for, yeah, to cover a very wide range of tasks. Uh, here in the, on the, yeah, on the separate, uh, on the, on the uh, four different movies, you can see systems handling, transporting, loading open cassettes, Smith pots, reticle, also RSPs. And I think in a minute, there will also be something with 300 millimeters. So it shows very different uh, yeah, applications that we already integrated in the recent years. Huh? So an important thing, question is, how, what do I have to do in order to directly make it, yeah, make it, make it work? And we say ready for immediate use. It's a fast and easy installation. You do not need a special infrastructure for these systems. Um, the systems can handle infrastructure barriers. Of course, we don't need a high ceiling height. Yeah, as, as a, for example, we also, of course, have con conveyors in our product portfolio, but in order to do something, uh, transportation or delivery, you need always a ceiling height of three meter 50 plus. And of course, sometimes uh, if a clean room uh, is growing, is growing in areas that maybe originally were not designed uh, as clean room areas, we have quite a few customer cases uh, like this, then the ceiling is not so high. And so, of course, there is maybe no chance to install an OHG or conveyor system. And so, of course, then a mobile robot, of course, is a much easier implementation as it's moving on the ground. We can also move up some ramps. Uh, we have several uh, cases already where we go through electrical doors. So normally we can uh, live with uh, yeah, almost all uh, clean room environments. Uh, of, uh, of course, it's easy to start with a single system to look at one application, uh, even maybe with, with, with an E-Rack or a rack with box opener so involved or with a stocker and then to load 
the few systems a complete day. And if this is fine, of course, the fleet uh, can be expanded step by step where there are fleet managers and it's easy to, yeah, to, to, to increase the number of mobile robots. And finally, of course, rob if you have a fleet, I mean, one system, of course, cannot substitute itself, but if you have a big fleet, then of course you can assign areas uh, to a fleet so that the systems can substitute themselves. And even if the systems, of course, have an uptime of plus 99%, Sometimes there's also maintenance necessary. And of course, if you have a fleet, then you don't even, let's say, realize if you maybe have to do some maintenance or something at, 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 a, at a system. And last but not least, uh, charging on the fly during handling. This is also yeah, a very imp important feature. Um, when you have a mobile robot, you of course want the mobile robot to work 24 seven and do not need dedicated charging time. Uh, and we found a very nice solution where we do the charging while the robot is doing the material handling. Yeah, so either loading an equipment, unloading equipment, a stocker or, or a rack. And at the same time, we can charge with a very high current so that when we, let's say, stand maybe at a position for one minute or two minutes to exchange or make, making three swaps to unload the system and load the system again, then the battery is directly filled to up to 100% again so that the system could run, yeah, could run for hours, yeah, five, six hours without any recharging. But normally, uh, as I indicated, we have most application scenarios where we then maybe the system is then running, doing jobs uh, for going on a mission for 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And after, if, if it's after these 10, 15 minutes, is again at a position where it do, does multiple swaps, then uh, the battery is directly fully charged again. And so this is very often a question, uh, how much productive time do we have? Yeah, the system is in most application scenarios productive 24 seven. Of course, if you have the system and make it run for one, miles through or one kilometer from one fab through a corridor to another fab or so, then of course it might be that you need some dedicated charging time. So ready to help everywhere. One system for all base tools, rec situation. So what does this mean? So work in narrow and angular base. Very often there are questions, uh, if a bay is very narrow, uh, is it possible to turn around and get out again? Uh, most of our systems don't even have to turn around because they are, have omnidirectional drives and we don't have, yeah. Theoretically speak, uh, spoken, the system has four front sides. Yeah? It could drive in any direction. Of course, it makes sense to drive in the direction where the more slimmer sides are. But these are at least two sides when you, I hope you can see my mouse. Yeah, so we could use this as front side, but when we go in a, in a narrow bay, we could just go back uh, the opposite way and don't have to turn around, which gives us the possibility to go, for example, in base with a width of a meter or less, depending if it's a 200 or 300 millimeter system. Yeah, of course, the tools don't have to be aligned uh, we do um, we do mobile robotic systems since uh, uh, I think 13 years now. But these mobile robots that let's say where we have started with are rail guided systems. And of course, for these rail guided systems where we also have a huge installed base of uh, yeah, close to 200 systems, um, they of course still need a rail on the ground and they need that systems are aligned. But the mobile robots, of course, uh, have the advantage that they uh, can move around freely and yeah, don't have these limitations. Another thing is, of course, that the load ports don't have to be ready for OHT use. Uh, I mean, there are some obvious cases, of course, where there's no uh, direct line from the ceiling down to the load port. 
uh, where sometimes load port, especially in 200 millimeter fabs that don't use Smith pots, where you really have to not only place a cassette on a load port, but place a cassette on a load port somewhere, some whatever, 10, 20 centimeters inside the system. And of course, there's an, no chance to do direct OHT loading uh, from the ceiling or, or OHT track. Yeah. And a very important uh, issue is also that, of course, FAPs have many, many racks. And of course, it's also nicer if you can do the loading and, and, and let's say the transport from stockers as you then have less complex system. But of course, uh, if cust normal customer has many racks, and of course, you then still have to use all the racks with uh, mobile robo robotics, because the uh, first impact, at least, at least during demos, but also uh, in many cases, yeah, maybe for the whole li uh, lifetime of the, of, 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 of the systems of the FAP, the racks will survive. And so the mobile robot has to uh, load, unload uh, from the racks. And of course, then you have to use uh, three or four levels uh, of the racks that the customers have. Yeah, and, uh, higher reach than any operator. We have uh, some special versions for vertical handling. And of course, when you load the reticles in some steppers, or scanners, uh, the uh, entry as the loading, as the load port, sorry, is very high and so uh, we have then some yeah, some modified uh, robots on mobile robots that also can reach these heights without any small staircases uh, when some uh, some customers uh, op operators have to climb to, to do the loading if it's manually loaded so suitable for various products and carriers and special tasks so you can already see in the picture, there's a big variety and some might look familiar to you. Some I think might not be so familiar to you. So of course we have the various semi-interface uh, standard systems like uh, Smith pots, Foops, Fosbys, Radical Smith pots, sometimes so some kinds of boxes and cassettes. But we also have customers, uh, now we have already two uh, that are interested in uh, customized carriers with really uh, heavy metal cassettes. They are very heavy. And we have solutions where we could handle uh, metal cassettes up to 15 kilograms. Yeah, so, and 15 kilograms with a six axis robot. Yeah, of course, uh, we could also have so solutions easily on, uh, on, on, on systems for higher weights, but here this 15 kilograms is a value where we still have a very flexible six axis robot that can access many, yeah, has a, a very high, re a very long reach and can access yeah, tools, racks and so on. And we have also customized solutions for very special applications. And when you look at the, I hope my mouse, my pointer is working, on the lower left side here, uh, you still can imagine that this is a mobile robotic base. Yeah, you see here the laser scanner. You can also see the six axis robot. You can see here a 300 millimeter open cassette. But what you see here on the system these are, I sometimes say, is like two aquariums. Yeah, these are uh, water tanks with each 40 liters of water. Uh, and this is a yeah, very special system. It's not for uh, fish farms. It's really for semiconductor. It's for some special, yeah, as, in, as we indicated here, DSP processes, where the waivers after some processes are not allowed to be exposed to air. And so the transport to the next process step has to be carried out where the waivers are emerged into water. And so uh, we, as let's say our systems are very strong and we design the systems by ourselves. We have the flexibility to, yeah, we had the flexibility to create the solution where we have multiple systems running now at, at, at customers. And 
yes, sometimes uh, it's spilling some water, but of course also the inside of the system has been modified so that the water cannot yeah, harm the system. And uh, yeah, it's very nice application. So safety, I just mentioned, of course, that we, especially for the, for the, for the we call it HeroFab wet system, for the water system, uh, of course, a very detailed look into safety was important. But I think general, it's a very important feature, uh, safety and cleanliness, uh, that these systems replace the humans uh, and improve the quality uh, also regarding the uh, yeah, contamination and cleanliness level. So our systems uh, are up to ISO class three. So this is like the uh, former uh, federal standard uh, class one clean room. We have very low particle gener uh, generation. Uh, the systems optimized for airflow, clean room design, and of course the uh, design and, uh, and materials are uh, optimized for the usage in, 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 in the clean room. Yeah, we, uh, yeah. Uh, almost every new customer is always double checking this and there was no issue with this. So safety. Safety is a very big issue because safety has, let's say, at least three different uh, yeah, aspects. Of course, the most important normally uh, is a personal safety. Yeah? That a, a, a big robotic system, of course, has always the potential, uh, all the threat, uh, it could harm people. Yeah, so our systems, I just point out in brief, our systems uh, have uh, multiple laser scanners around the system. Uh, they sh do uh, virtual shields around, uh, walls around the system. So whenever a person is getting closer to the system, the system is getting slower, moving slower. Uh, the robot is moving slower, so uh, and as when the person gets too close in the uh, not in the warning but also in the uh, safety zone, then the system stops. And as soon as the person is out, of course, the system directly resumes uh, operation. There are much much more uh, safety features regarding this. Then the second thing is, of course, your produced goods are normally very expensive. And uh, of course, uh, it's also very important to gently handle uh, the cassettes, the Smith pots, uh, with a very high level of safety. So we have so many sensors at the systems, at the uh, grippers, at the end effectors. Um, yeah, and last but not least, of course, there's the safety of the uh, surrounding, the surveillance of the uh, and, and environment. Yeah, and for all this, uh, uh, you will know, uh, normally we do not have to say, yes, we looked at safety, of course, everybody is asking, yes, please show certification. So we have folders full of uh, certification starting with CE, several CMI, several UL certifications of ourselves and of course of the components that, that we use, especially the robot and battery are normally in focus there. So. Yeah. Last? No? Yeah, I'm, I'm just looking at the time. So um, this was basically the, let's say, the uh, solution to, uh, to uh, nah, bypass these, uh, these, all these manual handling issues by mobile robotics. Uh, and when, yeah, now it's working. And when you now look at the same issue again, you of course see that many issues that have been there uh, when you have a labor intensive part uh, will be optimized with a higher degree of, uh, of automation and especially for the uh, intra bait transport, mobile robotics uh, is, uh, I think a very, yeah, a very useful and 
solution and yeah, inter in interesting topic we would like to discuss with all of you in Singapore. And so, uh, very brief for our company, do I have enough? Yeah, I have, I have two more minutes. Very brief for our company, of course, we have, uh, we do handling systems, transport and storage systems. This was part of, uh, one part of this is a mobile robot. Uh, briefly, I would like to mention that we have also different kind of identification system, RFID systems, but also 3D location systems for use in FAB. And I think uh, even if we are not a software company like Systema, we have a huge, yeah, we have, do not only have a fleet manager, but we also have a huge fleet of software engineers in our headquarter here. And of course, we have a service department. Very brief, the quick facts. We do automation in semiconductor since 1991. The headquarter is in Dresden. We have its own subsidiary in the United States, but we have representations in Singapore and Taiwan. You will see later also in the, in the breakout session that we are in, represented in Singapore via micro optics. I think many of you might know micro optics uh, because they distribute not only our product, but they also have a long history in Singapore and Southeast Asia. We are about 200 people, focus the semiconductor industry. Yeah. And as time is getting close, I would just like to, yeah. Uh, point out that we will have a breakout session at two o'clock Singapore time where we will have also a team available for questions. We will show some more slides, some uh, another short presentation. And yeah, this was my last slide. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Budga. I know you also have a polling for our audience here, right? So yes. I will uh, launch the polling now. So uh, all of you will see a pop-up window again. So um, please take your choice and later we will share the results. Meanwhile, do, if you have any question, we still can answer two to three questions in this section. Please type in your question in the chat box below or raise your, use the raise hand button. So, uh, you, so that we can ask you to unmute and ask your question. Okay, we will wait for like one more minute to let our participants here to fill in their answers for the polling. Hmm. No, but it's already looking interesting. This is, <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is a great thing. Yeah, feel free to comment <laughs> that. So we are having more people filling in it up. There are uh, five questions in total, so they may need some time to uh, read through the questions. Yeah. Mm. I think as I'm the last presenter, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> at least I have time. It's still dark outside here. No worries. Yeah, more and more people are filling up. Filling it up. Uh, okay, we got a question here, Bugat. So uh, before we stop the polling, maybe we can, uh, you can answer this question from Pessy. Have you already equipped backend production or other industries outside the semiconductor industry with mobile robotics? If so, which ones? Um, yes, we have already. Also we um, did already, um, so our focus in the past was very clearly on semiconductor industry. This is, this, this is correct. But uh, we have some, ah, it's, uh, we, some, some of the projects we're not allowed to say, but we, we have some projects for transportation outside the mm. semiconductor industry where we also handle uh, very big substrates uh, with some uh, roll on, roll off uh, conveyors on our system. We uh, have also some, how to say, yeah, let's say in the, in the virtual reality, glass production, uh, some applications. 
and uh, we are looking, also we have more and more uh, requests from back end where uh, let's say also some interesting requests are with uh, high uh, payload and, 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 and so. so. So yes, we are, and, and I think the message is as we design the system by ourselves, we are open to uh, let's say discuss any issue where let's say clean, safe, accurate handling is required. Yeah. Recently, for example, we also have many requests from pharma companies, uh, the med medical, also pharmace pharmaceutical companies. I think it's correct English word, yeah? uh, where they also need to handle. But uh, there we are still in discussion with. With back and some other uh, industries, we are, have have some more progress and some new projects. Okay, thank yeah, you. But so if, you. If someone, Sorry. if someone of the audience has, uh, also I mean, sometimes it's, it's it's interesting which industry have similar demands, yeah, uh, similar needs, and of course we do not know all industries. We are we are let's say we come from traditionally from the semiconductor. Uh, but if someone has a request and, and says, hey, uh, what we are mm -hmm. doing here is similar, uh, please feel free to contact uh, either us here or micro-optics. Uh, uh, later, I think to, today in the breakout session, we will also show uh, mm -hmm. of micro-optics uh, email address. We are always, also we love to discuss your, your cool. project. There's uh, some more questions coming in from uh, one from Jag Jagadish from NXP. He asked, what about robots for narrow links of Asian manufacturing? Do you have anything to share? Um, the question, uh, you mean narrow lanes, yeah? So yeah, narrow, narrow lanes. Uh, you mean uh, not wide, yeah, uh, we, our, uh, we have different... Um, Product families. Yeah, the Hero 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 Fab is one product. The other product that you have seen uh, earlier for doing the the mask loading and so it's called Scout. And uh, let's say we we can uh, do jobs in uh, bays which have less than one meter width. But uh, it really depends very much uh, still on the use cases. And of course, when we do in very narrow lanes, then we, can do, we cannot do full speed. Yeah, then, then of course the speed of the systems is going down. So it's always a compromise because of safety. Yeah, of course we could draw also drive with high speeds through narrow lanes. But uh, if in a narrow bay, let's say maybe a person is walking out just behind the system or so, uh, and all these theoretical, very, not very likely, but theoretical cases, of course, have to be thought about uh, in advance. And so um, then, yes, we can do narrow lanes, but uh, it really, also it, it's difficult to give one number because it really depends on the system, on the setup of the system, and of course, on the safety requirements, how narrow something could be. Jagadish, do you have any follow-up on your questions? Sorry, uh, we cannot hear you clearly from your mic. So, okay, uh, sorry Jagadish, we cannot hear you. Maybe we come back to you later. And uh, Bugat, we have another question from Jay from UCT about have you implemented these robots in uh, semiconductor equipment manufacturing company? Yes, sure. Uh, no, sorry, semiconductor equipment manufacturing. Company. Yeah. So, so, so sorry. I, uh, um, no problem. No, we have also some OEMs, also some uh, equipment manufacturers as our customers, but uh, 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 we have different products for them. Yeah, we do also uh, automation cells, automation solutions for them. Yeah, we have uh, oh, maybe uh, maybe 10 or so bigger, so some really big, some, some other uh, customers for uh, automation solutions, which are equipment manufacturers themselves. Yeah, um, a very famous one also, uh, I think, which I can disclose here is for example, Zeiss. Yeah, we do uh, for Zeiss many handling, even for EUV masks, we do some handling uh, cells for
for them. So we have also expertise, not only up to ISO 3 clean room class, but down to ISO 1 and better clean room classes. Yeah, so maybe a little bit, this is for our background, why our systems are really clean and really safe. Uh, because also, of course, when you handle EUV masks, then uh, the, the value of something is, uh, of, of these masks is even much, much more. So we have systems, we have solutions for mask handling, substrate handling, very special handlings, also, of course, waiver handling and, 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 and so on. But um, I think in the past, we only had one request from uh, equipment manufacturer, no, two requests from equipment manufacturer if we could also let our mobile robots run in their demo labs, and uh, but these projects uh, are, are, are not also have not been done yet at the moment. Okay, uh, so I but think. Of course, uh, but, but, but also here, if there's sorry, sorry to interrupt you, Julian. It's okay. It's okay. But, uh, but if there's an equipment manufacturer, for example, with a big, uh, let's say, uh, showroom or test room, yeah, what, with one customer, I think it was also to uh, move and load uh, test masks in their, uh, I, I, it was not my project, I think it, I don't know, it was a, de uh, I think it was a test lab or something like this, yeah. Of course, I mean, the systems, I mean, if, if the OEM is big enough that it makes sense to, uh, to, to run a, a mobile robot in their test uh, demo or whatever facility, of course, uh, the systems are there. Yeah, we. I think we could immediately use the same solutions that we already have, and it would be very easy to, let's say, do a demo or uh, discuss these cases. Sorry, okay. now, <laughs> now I finish. No problem. So, uh, Jagadish, is your mic uh, okay now? Maybe uh, we let, let Jagadish to follow up first. Okay. Yeah, we can hear you now. Hear okay. All right. But now, basically, I just want to follow up on the. I saw the. Your slides, the robots width is uh, much wider. Typically in the clean room fabs, it's one and a half tiles. Uh, uh, that's a space uh, available in the lanes. Uh, of course, even in the assembly sites uh, now in Asia, the, the bay or the lanes are very narrow. And they're also in the assembly sites, typically it's one and a half tiles. So the robot, um, uh, width has to be narrower and agile. Maybe, of course, I, I could see that six axis robot. So are you able to offer some robots that uh, meets that requirement? That was my question. I think with the 200 millimeter solutions that we have, yeah, we have different base for also similar looking, but still different, also modified base for 200 millimeters. Uh, you say one and a half tiles, which is like 900 millimeters or 90 centimeters. And I think uh, the Scout and the Hero Fab uh, both could do this. But uh, again, the question is then, uh, is it, if let's say it's, if all aisles are only 900 millimeters, of course, uh, the throughput will be not the maximum, which is uh, possible when, let's say, you have wide aisles. Yeah? Yeah. I think the, the, the aisle width generally, if it's 900, uh, I think it's really uh, close to the lower limits. The scout maybe can go uh, a little bit even less than this, but the hero fat, this is 900. I think this is really the limit, yeah, plus, plus yeah. minus. So we would have to- uh, would 900 have to, to 1000. I think the challenge the industry faces today is the, the speed of the robot so that you get the WPH uh, uh, to match the labor cost productivity uh, to get the re good return on investment. So, and, and also the challenge, uh, another question I had was more of, uh, what about the vibration and the particle generation when the robot moves and carries the wafers or the packaged product? So that Much. is another challenge we have seen uh, in the robots, uh, which uh, not meeting the narrow lane or the narrow bay requirement. Okay, of course, also the particle generation is uh, almost not measurable. Yeah, uh, the, the robots, we use Stolpli and Fanuc robots, and they are uh, much better than this ISO class three. Yeah, so this is no issue. Yeah, uh, uh, of course, the particle generation in general uh, is also somehow depending on your clean room floor. Yeah, also I've seen some clean room floors with huge holes inside. And of course, when you go there with a manual trolley, 
and the wafers and the boxes are shaking like crazy, of course, yeah, then of course you also have vibration and particle, most likely particle generation through vibrations then. But what we see, and we have done several measurements, is that with our mobile robots, the vibration is much less than with an operator pushing the trolley. And when the robot is loading uh, on a load port, it's normally loading more gentle or at least as gentle as an operator can do. But the robot will do it then 100% of the times, Monday mornings, Friday evenings, and Sunday night. And we know from customers that sometimes I think, I will, let's say, some shifts sometimes have people that maybe are not so uh, soft and gentle with, uh, with these things. Yeah, but. To, to give a clear answer, we've done multiple tests also with customers. Particles never have been an issue so far, and vibration is much less uh, than with uh, when humans do this. Yeah. Okay, thank but you, Gugat. But, but these are good questions, and when you are interested in this, we, we, we uh, would like to further discuss this with you also. Uh, the narrow aisles, which is maybe a, a bigger topic, because if it's really narrow everywhere, then for sure this is a bigger challenge, I think, uh, I think with vibration and uh, uh, contamination, this is no issue. The aisle width, uh, and you are right, of course, uh, you have to justify return of investment, and throughput is a very important issue, and if the throughput is going down because of the speed, uh, but one last comment uh, to, to, to this, uh, your first question is, we also have rail guided systems. Yeah? And these rail guided systems, if, also if you have load ports in a row, or more or less in a row, yeah? it's, it's, it's not, uh, not counting every centimeter, then we also have uh, rail guided systems which could, uh, go, uh, could load and unload and, and serve a complete day. And this is a little bit uh, more narrow than the completely free moving mobile robots. Yeah, and there we have also a huge installed base and lots of experience. Okay, thank you, Bugat. So uh, since we are running out of time, I uh, know that actually we have some questions not answered and we can address it in the afternoon's breakout section. So now uh, uh, you can see the shared poll results about the five questions. Uh, majority say actually they are, uh, I think, similar response for very much affected and little affected uh, by the COVID-19 crisis and a certain absence of operators. Uh, and from the uh, participants here, um, most of them are facing the uh, majority are facing the quality issue and uh, the handling system they already using for their fat. Of, uh, most of them actually say no automation so far. So quite similar to the results uh, for the system of polling just now. So uh, Number four, the degree of automation. Uh, almost half uh, mentioned they have less than 30% for this question. And for the last question, um, yeah, um, more, uh, more than 30% saying that no, they, not yet, uh, they are not using the AGVs or mobile robots yet, but they are very interested. So very good to know that they are very interested. So do come back for afternoon section. So uh, I think this is all the presentations we have for this morning. So before we end the section, I, uh, I would like to flash out the LinkedIn slide again. So um, as I mentioned this morning before the event, uh, we encourage all of you to join our group that is exclusively, exclusively set up for the participants today. So in the group, you will be able to see um, different uh, participants profile, message them, post your solutions, uh, ask questions. Yeah, it's a group for all of you to engage with each other to expand your business network. So you can sc scan the QR code here to join the group or uh, from the chat box, uh, my colleague Stephanie has posted up the link there. So you can click in and um, request to join the group and we will grant the approval very soon. So, uh, Thank you very much for the participation this morning. We have a very fruitful morning. So I uh, hope to see all of you in the breakout sections this afternoon. Uh, uh, the Systema and Fematics team, they will be there to answer your questions and to deep dive into their solutions that have, present, that have been presented. So thank you again. Uh, see you all in the afternoon. Thank you.
Yeah, and some of you are asking whether the slides can be shared. Yes, we will share all of the presentation slides after the event. Yeah. Oh, sorry. And then uh, we have a uh, polling here, uh, the post-event polling. So uh, before you go, please give us a comment so that we know how to uh, make our events better. Thank you. Do help us to fill in the survey before you go. We love to hear your feedback. <laughs>